Hello guys and gals, me Mudahar, and uh, you know, I want to just talk about failures, okay? When I talk about gaming failures, this is one that I'm going to show you right here. Concord, 160 players playing as of four hours ago. A 660 player all-time peak. So you might be like, whoa, Muda, what are we roasting indie games today? Mm -mm. Concord is actually a triple A live service shooter brought to you by a small tiny gaming company known as Sony Computer Entertainment uh, or PlayStation Studios, whatever. So yeah, one of the largest people in the gaming world has actually released the biggest failure, somehow a bigger gaming failure than the fucking Borderlands movie, okay? How that managed to happen? is actually shocking, and it's something worth talking about in today's video. So I decided to go to Concord Steam page, and I noticed problem number one in this situation. $49.99 Canadian to purchase this five-on-five -five live service slop shooter. Now, if somehow you were mentally deranged enough, you know, maybe you were like, I don't know, Jeffrey Dahmer or something, or, or a reincarnation of John Wayne Gacy, you might decide, I'll buy an $80 version of this game, the Digital Deluxe. What does that version contain? Well, it contains the game, I would hope, and 16 character skins and some extra character skins. So yeah, uh, you know, all to show around the, the couple thousands of people that potentially are playing this game. So yeah, this game, thankfully, because of its low player count on both systems, it seems, allows you to actually play up with friends across the PlayStation and the PC, so you two can experience mediocrity together. Now, I decided to look up the actual reviews for this, and it's kind of a mixed bag. You have a few people talking about this review, and one of them is, I would say, a pretty decent one. This guy has 9.5 hours of playing the game, so, all right, so this guy played for, you know, a fair bit of time, enough that I would imagine could be a fair you know, amount to critique a video game. At the time of writing, Concord is at around 250 concurrent players on a weekday, and a solid weekend has 400 people. There's a lot of speculation and brain gazing being done to explain why this triple A major release hero shooter, which has had over $100 million, <coughs> oh, that, that, was, that was a lot of bullshit being placed in my body right there. I think I, think I was rejecting that a little bit. Now, I don't know where people pulled the uh, $100 million out. You know, maybe it was a deep crevice in their rectum, but I've heard numbers up to 150, 200 million. So, you know, if we got the old uh, Casio calculator watch out real quick and just decided, you know, let's just drop that down there. How many zeros are we getting here? Actually, surprisingly, you can only go up to 10 million on a, on a Casio watch. So we can't calculate the cost per player of Concord's insane budget. But I would imagine it's probably not economically good, okay? Yeah, the game is doing a pretty terrible job. And I don't wanna just stop there. I went to a site known as PSN Profiles, and uh, basically what this site does is it calculates how many players uh, own the game based on how many players on PlayStation Network have a trophy attributed to the game. Now for Concord, it appears that it has 1,150 game owners. Now obviously this is based on you know, just data that has been gathered through PlayStation's API, but it doesn't include, from what I understand, uh, private users or what anything, right? Like people who are locking away their trophy information. So let's extrapolate and just say tens of thousands of players have purchased this game. Clearly not enough to make back whatever they fucking spent down the road. Now, obviously, when you look at the character designs for Wabre or <laughs> Wabreakers, Got a bit too ahead of myself now, didn't I? <laughs> You'll find out that Concord's character design is about as uh, default boring as one could expect. I think it's somewhere in between XCOM 2's character creator basically being forced to randomize uh, versus Guardians of the Galaxy slop being thrown right at you. So obviously these designs are something that people were laughing at, but it wasn't just that about this game. There's a few reasons why this project failed. But I'll start off from the beginning. Two months ago, this game was announced in the CGI trailer. And I remember at the time, me and my buddy, Kyle uh, Imari, we were watching this together, okay? I think we watched it on a state of play. And uh, it, we actually laughed about it because it was like this five on five shooter that probably would have looked cool if it, maybe it would, if it had like a single player component attached to it. But honestly, at this point, a five on five uh, shooter is not something that's going to be really grabbing anybody because the market itself is so massively oversaturated that you really don't have 
uh, you know, you don't really have like a limited amount. You, you have way too many games to be playing in this style. That Concord is basically jumping into a market that it, it, it immediately is already like, uh, you know, outclassed them, okay? It's already like, it, it's already jumping into this, this massively oversaturated pool of, of five on five shooters. So the other thing is, obviously, a lot of these shooters now are free to play. You know, recently Valorant ended up coming out free to play on consoles. And, you know, it's something that I've been kind of playing because for me, playing Valorant on my PC because of a TNT cheat wasn't necessarily a possibility. However, playing it on consoles where I don't have to worry about the anti-cheat, I've actually been having fun with it. I've actually been enjoying the game. And it's totally fucking free, okay? Meaning that you can enjoy these games and uh, not have to pay any money to it. Now, obviously, a game like Concord, I don't see surviving past, like, a year, okay? And I'm only saying a year because I'm pretty sure Sony has, like, a contract with, like, a server hosting company to make sure this game can see at least one year. After that, I don't think this game is going to come. I think it's going to go the same route as Lawbreakers, where it will die, and hopefully, maybe for preservation's sake, it might come back as a private server, but I don't think Sony's going to keep this going unless these hundred something players are actually all whales and they're spending like a thousand bucks on their storefront, okay? Because that's what these games are designed for. They're not, they're not designed for crazy gameplay. They're designed so you can just play a box standard shooter and effectively just uh, buy some skins to show off. Now, of course, looking at the IGN review for this, because I, could, I, I considered, you know, instead of wasting my time and money on this project, I might as well just see this gameplay. And immediately right here, I can tell you that the gameplay that I'm looking at is not different whatsoever, at least conceptually, for games like Overwatch 2, or even games like Destiny 2's PvP mode, which, again, that's a free... Both those games are free to play. You could just download those instead and play these titles. So obviously it's five on five. These characters have uh, different, you know, abilities. They're operators and whatnot. It's a five on five game. That's about it. And obviously I just want to see the review that IGN will give this. I'm sure they're going to give it like a seven out of 10, uh, despite how generic it is, because IGN will literally give any single thing a seven out of 10, okay? Dude, the... dude. <laughs> God damn, dude. <laughs> yeah. Hey, dude, they give it a 7 out of 10, dude. <laughs> dude, they'll give, any, they'll give anything a higher score than Alien Isolation, bro. What a shame. So, you know, the only way that I knew about this game coming out was because of a YouTuber that I knew, uh, known as Skill Up, who basically showcased some gameplay for this uh, over the weekend. You know, Sony wasn't really advertising this project whatsoever, at least advertising that I was, I was seeing. I didn't notice anything necessarily even on the PlayStation storefront. And I think this game just kind of dropping and dying isn't really much of a shock to anyone. So when I'm looking into more of this review, it's like, where's this flaw? It is in the gameplay, which is sharp, responsive, and contains depth in multitudes of characters for all variety of mechanical kits. We have tanks, damage carries, utility abusers, movement fiends, healers, and more. The game modes are solid and the balance isn't particularly terrible. Although if you play for long, you start to notice damage dealing squishes are a little overturned. So again, this, this person seems like they're very much, uh, you know, they're, they're very much uh, in tune with this uh, live service, you know, uh, shooter trend. They know they know some of the stuff. They wa definitely watch a lot of esports on Twitch, I'll say. But again, going down into it, one thing they do talk about is combined with Sony's disregard for marketing their actual product, which I, I agree, there really wasn't much marketing to it whatsoever. Uh, the game effectively just didn't really bother coming out whatsoever. The game really didn't come out of the gate with the support that they needed from the actual company. So whatever money Sony spent, whether it be something as insane as $100 million to $200 million, or something, I hope, lower than that, Sony ultimately lost their cash because they just didn't have any confidence in their actual product. Sony screwed up majorly by not properly advertising marketing, but it is a stubborn and often thoughtless nature of media consumption. <laughs> this has to be a Redditor, bro. Overall, TLDR, the game is good, very good. 40 bucks is a bit much to ask for, but there's a lot of effort put into the game mechanically, narratively, and creatively. It's pretty to look at, fun to play, and has tons of lore for a dork to dig into, which is admirable. I, I Again, lore for any of these video games, 
all these live service games have a bunch of lore tossed into it. You know, if you just look up the bios for Rainbow Six Siege characters, you'll find entire lore entries that just fill up entire... You, you can make entire Netflix side stories. You can make, like, entire anime seasons out of some of those lore entries. So, yeah, lore is pretty much a strong facility for all these games, but what I've seen gameplay-wise wasn't anything that was dramatically different. One of the game modes people were talking about was this one game mode called Rivalry, which, like, again, to sh if this is the best this game has to offer, what this game mode effectively does is give you a five-on-five -five experience where everyone has one life and they're supposed to capture points in the round. Now, again, if this is the best Concord had to offer, then you're not looking at a game with much to offer in the first place. Because every single one of these successful shooters has, like, a twist to it. You know, Counter-Strike has been Counter-Strike forever, and it's got its community built in. Uh, you know, you've got Call of Duty with its Warzone and, like, all the event nonsense they've had put into it. But, of course, with games like Rainbow Six Siege, it's the ability to have dynamic gameplay experiences where you're blowing up walls, you know, creating new opportunities on the fly. These are all things that these games do that offer some level of unique gameplay that people keep coming back for. What Concord does is nothing dramatically better than its competitors. And it does this at an actual cost of $40. So look, you know, Concord is going down the same route as something like Lawbreakers, okay? It's jumped into a market where it's completely oversaturated, and it's competing with actual games out there that are not only free to play, but in a much better state than what this game is offering. Which is a shame, because look, if this game had some teeth to it, then Sony is not going to capitalize on it. This launch is already enough for every executive at Sony to just say, write this shit off as a loss. Because, look, maybe the development team, and I hope the development team can come around and basically make a Rainbow Six Siege story, like a, like a, like a story where every season more and more people jump in. But at this point, that's kind of a fucking lost cause, okay? This game has dropped out without any support from the actual community and the few hundreds of people that are playing it. There's a good chance next week this probably will have less than 100 players playing on Steam and probably roughly the same on PlayStation. We're getting to a point where the Metal Gear Online private servers somehow are going to have a higher average player count than an official AAA Sony slop release that isn't even one month old. It's insane. Now, of course, the other thing is, if you're going to spend 40 bucks, you might as well spend 40 bucks or a fraction of that on something like Doom 1 and 2 and just take the Doom 2 wad and play the ray tracing version of the game right now. Because let me tell you something, spending it on these live service experiences that won't last for longer than one year is not how you should be spending your money, okay? Maybe Sony should have just released this as a free-to-play experience and had people jump in. Hey, here, here's a great idea. Here's a fucking... I'm going to give this idea to Sony right now. Instead of putting millions of dollars into shit like Concord, just bring back Mag. Bring back a classic. Bring back MAG 256 players online and just bring it to the PS5 again. Just do that, okay? Give Zipper Interactive a job. Release a free-to-play version of SOCOM, US Navy SEALs, on PS5. D boom! You got P I would buy a crazy shit ton of microtransactions for that. Would I buy it more than what I would I do for Concord? Absolutely. Will Sony take that advice? Probably not. If you like what you saw, please like, comment, and subscribe. Dislike if you dislike it. I am out.